Aaron Prella here, aka The Film Freak, and I'm coming at you with another special movie review. Last night I had the opportunity to check out Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and oh my god, I need to talk about this one now. I'm a huge fan of the Indiana Jones movies, and although a lot of people aren't crazy that there's a fifth one now, I was so excited to see this after watching the first trailer back in December. Now because the movie just came out, I don't want to ruin it for anyone, so I'm not going to discuss anything about the story and plot. Instead I want to express my overall thoughts about the movie and talk about things I really liked. Alright, so the first thing I want to bring up is Harrison Ford's performance. The Indiana Jones movies are the reason why I love Harrison Ford as an actor. He does such a great job playing this character, and something I learned when watching him in this one is that age is just a number. As demanding as that role is, the fact that he can still portray Indy at 80? That's freaking impressive. He's a bit more slower now, mind you, but it's still pretty impressive, and I just want to give major props to Harrison Ford for still being able to rock that fedora and bullwhip. Next is the cast. Harrison is once again backed up by a great supporting cast. This time you've got Phoebe Waller-Bridge, if you remember her from that show Fleabag. She plays Indy's goddaughter Helena, who also joins him on the new adventure. you got Mads Mikkelsen, who plays the main villain of the movie, Dr. Jurgen Waller. Antonio Banderas makes an appearance in this, which I was surprised to see. But two actors who I was really happy to see return were John Rhys Davies as Sala and Karen Allen as Marion Ravenwood. Now Sala I already knew was making a comeback because he's featured in the first trailer, but Mary and I didn't think would be returning. Although their roles aren't as big as they were in any of the previous films, it was still great to see them, especially how this was like the last hurrah for everyone. So the next thing I want to talk about is the special effects. If there's one thing the Indiana Jones movies are known for, it's their special effects whether they're practical or done digitally. Like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Dial of Destiny's visual effects mainly go down the digital route. Green screens, CGI, basic technology for today's movie making, but still cool to see nonetheless. But one effect that I was really intrigued to see, and I just about say this each time I see it in other movies, and that is de-aging technology, using AI to make an elderly actor or actress look young again. Oh no, so in order for me to explain how it was used, I unfortunately have to spoil a little bit of the movie. I am so sorry, and I promise I won't give away too many details. Like the opening of The Last Crusade with that flashback of Boy Scout Indy, this movie's prologue involves a flashback of Indy and a former colleague sometime in 1944. Rather than getting a young actor who closely resembles Harrison Ford and playing Indy specifically for that sequence, de-aging technology was used on Harrison Ford to bring him back to how Indiana Jones first looked back in the 80s. They show snippets of it in the trailers and TV spots, but seeing it in full, I love how they used that technology. Because not only did it make the flashback more believable because we see Harrison Ford and not a look-alike actor, but when he first comes on and we see him young again, like, I got hit with serious nostalgia, and you probably will too. And this last thing I want to bring up, I knew about this prior to seeing the movie, so I didn't walk out all pissed off or anything. And that is Steven Spielberg's absence from Dial of Destiny. I don't know if it's because of the response Crystal Skull got, or just the fact that he didn't want to direct a fifth movie, but Spielberg did not come back to direct this. Instead, it was directed by James Mangold. Personally, I don't like when new directors are called in to do sequels. I know they can help a franchise grow creatively, but if they have a certain vision for how a story should continue, it could change everything, and usually not in a good sense. This is not the case with James Mangold. For starters, Mangold has been in the game for over two decades. Some of his movies include Copland with Stallone and De Niro, he directed 310 to Yuma, two of the Wolverine movies with Hugh Jackman, so he definitely knew what he was getting into with Indiana Jones. Yes, he takes the film places that Spielberg maybe wanted to but didn't, but it still felt like an Indiana Jones movie to me. The action was there, the adventure, the suspense, humor, you name it. Other than that, if I had to rate this movie out of 10, I'd have to give it a 7. Uh, I mean, what can I say, guys? I mean, it's in the same boat as Crystal Skull. It's not that great. But you know what, if you like watching these movies because they're fun and entertaining, then you will love Dial of Destiny. I had a blast watching it, and you know, you gotta understand, this is Harrison Ford's last time as Indiana Jones. You'll get a kick out of it. And that concludes my review. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning on seeing the movie. It came out yesterday, so you should have plenty of time to go and see it. If you already saw it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And while you're at it, 
like and subscribe if you're digging my content. Every bit of support helps. Well, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the movie.